sustainable and therefore one of their long-term goals is the abolishment of private property. And Article 2 of our Constitution says that all men have certain natural, essential, and inherent rights among which are enjoying and defending life and liberty, acquiring, possessing, and protecting property. Therefore, to participate in anything that smells of Agenda 21 or ICLEI is patently contrary to Part 1, Article 2. Also, Part 1, Article 12 says that, nor shall the inhabitants of this state, nor are the inhabitants of this state controllable by any other laws than those to which they or their representative, excuse me, representative body have given their consent. Our legislature has not given consent to participate in ICLEI or Agenda 21, nor can we without consent of Congress. And the people have not put any such provision into our Constitution as we did put into our Constitution in Part 1, Article 7, that we would uh, submit ourselves to the Constitution for the United States. So there is ample constitutional ground that not only permits this action, but actually requires the adoption of this amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Representative Swinford? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Representative. Um, in our rules of office, whether it's federal, state, local, all of us, we talk about not joining a subversive or anti-American agency, would this count as that? I would believe so, because it is subverting the constitutions of the state and the federal government. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative. Uh, the issue of this being non-germane and therefore inappropriate to address at this time uh, has been brought for us. Could you give me your opinion on that? Well, it certainly did pass the um, Executive Department's Administration Committee with a positive recommendation, and the House affirmed it at that point. It was, then when it went to municipal and county government, it was amended. So any action in that regard uh, is not on what you see before you. So the only action that the House has taken on something that looks like what you have before you has been positive. Anything that has had a positive vote in the House is, by definition, a germane amendment to a Senate bill. To a Senate bill. I'm not familiar with it. I will not ask my question. Thank you. Okay, Representative McConnell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Representative, thank you. Thank you for my question. Um, is it not true that the several of our presidents have gone along with parts of this Agenda 21, but each and every time it was through executive order, which therefore has no, uh, it is not binding to, to us? Absolutely. The Constitution for the United States is abundantly clear without consent of Congress. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Representative. Uh, did you know that the RNC uh, adopted a resolution exposing and condemning Agenda 21? I am not aware of that, but I'm not surprised about it either. Okay. Well, no more questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. will call uh, Representative uh, Committee. For the record, my name is Peter Hansen, representing Hillsborough County 6, Amherst and Milford. Thank you for taking my testimony. I will be brief. Uh, as part of my duties here in the legislature, I am a member of the EDA, EDNA uh, committee, and we were one of the first one. We were the first ones to hear this, the beginnings of this bill. Um, I think it's important for the committee to understand that <clears throat> when uh, this information was presented to our committee, uh, I was not a believer at all. In fact, I had a lot of difficulty in withholding my smirks and disbelief and wondered what planet these people were, had come from. 
Uh, however, as the presentation went along, I saw that this was something that was very, very, very well funded. As it turns out, it's in the billions and billions of dollars. It is something that's incremental. It is something that is bipartisan. Both uh, Republican and Democratic presidents have signed on to this uh, agenda. Uh, so I, I guess I say that so that that the people that may think that this that that this is a some sort of a conspiracy, which is another thought that went through my head as I heard the initial uh, comments, uh, it is not. It is not. I was convinced that this is something that we we really need to be concerned about. The I think it, we can say that the, the, the objectives of, of, of Agenda 21 uh, are, are, we cannot argue about what they are trying to do. Uh, I don't think there's anyone in this room that would object to clean water and clean air and things of that nature. But I do think that stomping on our constitutional rights is not the way that we would like to see that happen. Uh, if you Google ICLEI, you will get over 200,000 hits in less than one second. I mentioned the fact that there are billions of dollars spent on research, propaganda, and questionable and false science, and that uh, this uh, movement has gotten into the grade schools of our schools. So there is, there, it's definitely a program that has bided its time and is, is uh, patient and is willing to spend millions and billions of dollars to push this agenda forward. Um, I want to quote uh, uh, a definition, a UN Nations, uh, United Nations definition of Agenda 21. Agenda 21 is a comprehensive plan of action to be taken globally, nationally, and locally by organizations of the United Nations systems, governments, and major groups in every area in which humans have an impact on the environment. Uh, ICLEI is but one tentacle in a festering putrid pustule called Agenda 21. Through treaties signed by both presidents, well, I mentioned the presidents who've signed this thing, and it's UN sanctioned. Um, they go so far in, in the Agenda 21 is to uh, control birth, that's not birth control, but control births and taking of private property as we discussed earlier. It will mandate extreme, <clears throat> and in the case of, a, of the US constitutional Constitution, land and population control in the name of preserving the world. Uh, I want to give you one example of the multitude of ICLEI mandates. It refers to the agricultural system. The new ICLEI agricultural system has these changes. Each community will grow its own food on individual and or community owned farms that form a boundary around the community. All farming will be sustainable and eco-friendly. Organic farming will be certified by who? And monitored by a farm stakeholder committee. This will ensure that food labeled organic is authentic. Constant measurements will be taken to guarantee the sustainability and eco-friendly best practice managements of parameters are maintained. Organic farming will be productive without the use of pesticides or unnatural fertilizers. Industrial farming will no longer be allowed to damage the earth. Importing foreign food products will be reduced in order to increase local population and help the local economy. No more bananas. Uh, <laughs> I, I agreed to testify because I feel strongly about this, this issue, but more because I wanted this committee to understand, as the other two have, that that I was really a, a very much of a disbeliever before I started to read the, read the, uh, the issues. And, and I would encourage all the committee members here to take the time to do that. I think it's, it's frightening. I think it stomps all over our Constitution, both uh, national and state. And I would urge uh, a uh, pro vote on it. Thank you. I will take any questions. Any questions, Representative Baird? Yeah, we're talking about agriculture here. And, you know, it first came to mind was back in the 60s and the days of the Soviet. Mm -hmm. Yes. I would certainly agree with that one. Uh, the second question, if I may, yes. Um, large scale farming, if you do not, and I truly believe that we're, we're, you know, we're changing our approaches to large scale farming to be you know, more uh, 
more concerned about the environment, but if we did away with large scale farming, this nation would starve. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. And as we've seen in the African countries, uh, without water and so on and so forth, the same thing is happening there as well. So. Thank you, Sina. If there's no other questions, uh, the chair has been invited to call Representative Dan Nixon. Thank you for the committee. Good morning, everyone. I um, am pleased to be here. I'm, uh, uh, for the record, I'm Representative Lori Pettengill from Carroll One, Bartlett Jackson, Chatham, Hearts, Hales, and Conway. Um, I am handing around my statement. Um, it is with great concern that I am here, and I do know that here is H-E-R-E, -E, here to testify for Amendment 2058H uh, to SB 217FN. The concern arises over the continued sovereignty of our private lands in the United States of America. The International Council for Local Environmental Initiatives, ICLE, is a part of the UN Agenda 21. Agenda 21 was unanimously denounced by the committee men and committee women at the most recent GOP annual convention. And I've handed out that form. Uh, on it is signed the committee men and women who sponsored the amendment and uh, it was unanimously approved. So hopefully we will get this on our platform, which will be great because it's very important. Um, we have four communities in New Hampshire that are members of the ICLE initiative, Portsmouth, Wolfboro, Keene, and Nashua, um, all pay the UN to be active partners in sustainability. I believe Nashua pays about $1,400 to be a, a sustainability member. Non-elected conservation commission members involve communities in ICLE initiatives. Frequently, the community elected leaders um, leadership is unaware of the connection or even that their community is an ICLE member. This is really a initiative that is taking place by stealth and I don't think that the Conservation Commission members necessarily want to deceive um, the people in their communities. I think a, a lot of them are being deceived. Um, I think that uh, I, I, I spoke in another hearing that I was in Wolfboro and I said to a Wolfboro planning board member, so you're an Ickley community. And he said, I'm a what? And he had no idea. And I, I, I you know, challenge anybody to ask any of the Ickley community um, um, uh, elected leadership whether they know that they're an Ickley member and, and what, it, what, it, what Ickley is all about. So um, anyways, I, I, uh, I equate Ickley um, and Agenda 21 as the land grab equivalent to the Law of the Sea Treaty. I think that it is the UN land grab. The Law of the Sea Treaty obviously is, is the water grab from where the moose decides to go up where I, in my neck of the woods to the end of the Saco River. Um, I think that a lot of what it's, uh, a lot of how are the, the, the carrots of Ickley are being dis dispensed throughout New Hampshire are through um, uh, regional governance initiatives. And I gave you a sheet, um, and I'm, I apologize for not having more. It's uh, um, the Wyndham Residents Oppose Agenda 21. And in, in, um, in that, they were, they were asked to sign on to a regional initiative to get HUD money. They're little carrots. They're 1000 2000 3000 4000 dollars quite a quite a small amount of money for giving up your sovereignty I say but um, and and people are starting to open their eyes and say wait a second wait a second do we want to sign on to this and I think that's a great thing that community members are really starting to be um, uh, concerned about this we're going out a lot of people are having uh, meetings and saying this is what you're getting yourself into this is what this is where this program goes I like to think that um, Cass Sunstein stated in, in, in one of his classes, I was listening to somebody uh, talking about Cass Sunstein in, in, as a class member, stated that, um, that Congress really was going to become moot because they were going to, all they needed to, um, they, they didn't need really Congress to accept and approve a lot of the initiatives that they need to get through Agenda 21 through. All they needed was regional, regional governance. And through regional governance, they could get rules and regulations. There, were, there is no longer, there, there is nobody in that hierarchy that is an elected person. And that's where the problem lies also, is that, is that you must have elected people as part of the process of, of any kind of uh, decision-making processes in your communities and in your state. 
So, um, and I think they are achieving that quite well, actually. And so I agree with Representative uh, Baldassaro that um, his comment regarding the urgency of, of, um, of our expansion of signing communities and the urgency of this bill to be really seriously looked at and considered now because I think we need to stop this in its place now, like, like people said, because it is unconstitutional. Um, the, we did have one person that went against um, ICLEI in our uh, municip municipal and county government hearing, and I thought it was very interesting that he was also from Nashua. And Nashua is the regional commission that gives out all of the HUD money to the other regional commissions and communities throughout our state. So that seemed quite interesting to me that, that, um, that he was the only person that did speak against ICLEI. So uh, that is uh, the end of um, my uh, testimony. Please consider the ramifications of our sovereignty if ICLEI is allowed to continue to expand throughout our communities. And uh, thank you. I have a question for you here, and I'm going to bring up. The House in the Senate, as amended by the Senate, passed HB 514. And what it is, is an act related to the entry on private land and establish a community discussion study issues Right, right. Is this bill that we passed in the House go totally against particularly here, private property issues? Would, it, would this bill go against? Right, would, does it, uh, would this here be go against the communities that have Ickley? Do they support Ickley on private property issues, stuff that's in there? Under the oh, I know what you mean. You mean, you mean. Would Ickley, yeah, would Ickley be in direct, would Ickley be in direct um, uh, violation of, yeah, yeah, they, they're not, they, they're not compatible at all. You can't have private property and private property rights, which that bill, that bill initiates, and have uh, basically no, pu no uh, private property rights. I, I have a very interesting, the Defend Rural America, this was a very, I, I really, really liked this, um, this website because basically uh, the people who write in this website are, are uh, Fish and Game, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service employees, you know, they're past employees and they see what's going on. And in, in one of the paragraphs under the legal and legislation on conser conservation easements, which I think this is part of a, a plan of, of, uh, of ICLEI's, is for one, these easements require compliance with certain regulations, but these regulations are not static. They get worse over time. A set aside along a creek that starts with a 50-foot regulation can grow to a 300-foot aside, for example, and even engulf the land the home sits on without any further input or approval of the owner. For another, easements reduce property values often dramatically as property owners discover when they try to sell. These properties are in many cases snapped up by conservancy groups for pennies on the dollar, then sold at jacked up prices to the federal government at a handsome profit. The result, what started as an easement, grows into the permanent and perpetual abolition of private property. And this is what we're fighting. We're, for, we're fighting the permanent abolition of private property. And, and we, we've just really got to stop that. So like, real quick, so would you say that the three to four communities in the state of New Hampshire probably disregard our Constitution and rights of the people of New Hampshire? I think unbeknownst to them, yes, they did. that we're talking billions of dollars that are behind this Agenda 21. Does the name Soros come up anywhere in there? <laughs> I think the, na the name Nature Conservancy does. And, and Sierra Club. Yeah, so that's, those are the, the two names that pop up in my head. <laughs> Thank you very much, Robert. You're very welcome. Uh, welcome. Thank you. I didn't, I, uh, didn't know about this hearing until I actually noticed it going on, so I don't have any prepared remarks. I'd like to, uh, my name is Representative Tim Horrigan. I represent Durham, Lee, and Madbury. Um, I wasn't born in Durham, but I did uh, grow up there, so I know um, the people of Durham have always been um, just very concerned about, uh, about sustainability. They've always been very supportive of local agriculture, um, which doesn't mean we don't enjoy our bananas. It's just we'd like to ship some of our own, but we also, uh, like to let our farmers ship some of our products, our maple syrup, our cheese, and so forth, uh, to other countries. Um, 
So that's uh, been concerned, I think, even uh, even since the days of the founders. I, I uh, About a year ago, I was looking through the uh, state law library, and in the very first volume of Supreme Court decisions that they have there in the library, one of the first things was a case from Durham about a dispute about the, uh, the hog reeve that um, a local uh, farmer's hogs had escaped onto the public road, and there's a dispute over that. So uh, local agriculture has always been an integral part of my community, and I think we've always been aware that Durham is, you know, one small town in a small state in a country which is part of a, a small planet. And, um, and certainly uh, private property rights are very important. In fact, that's uh, one of the best ways to have a sustainable property, uh, sustainable economy is to have property rights so people uh, feel special responsibility for their little piece of a uh, little piece of the earth. So I, um, so I think certainly there's very, there's very strong support for sustainability. I think the people in my district are very aware, you know, as I said, the importance of local agriculture. They're very aware that the oil-based economy is going to have to change, that we're going to, uh, that we can't have the type of you know, uncontrolled uh, economic growth that we've had. Obviously, we have to find the growth. Um, so we have to find the growth from other avenues from where we've been getting it recently. So I think, um, and I think, I think this might, uh, might impact a lot of local initiatives that um, have a lot of value to the people of Durham, even as simple, something as simple as our weekly farmer's market that starts on June 4th, it's on the town hall lot. And this uh, bill could be, uh, you know, construed as preventing the town from lending the, prop the town property for the use of the farmer's market. Um, so I would... So I would um, sort of urge you, uh, urge the committee to uh, defeat this non-germane amendment. Um, I might also add just on a parliamentary thing that although um, non-germane amendments to Senate bills are allowable, um, that doesn't mean all non-germane, we can certainly, if it's a bad idea, as I believe it, that's a good enough reason to reject a non-germane amendment. Um, and also, this particular amendment seems more something to be more appropriate as a, uh, you know, as a House resolution or House concurrent resolution rather than something in an actual bill. It doesn't really have a whole lot of actual, uh, there's like a few changes to the law, but I think this is something would have been more appropriately addressed, and I guess it um, has been addressed several times as a, as a resolution. So I would um, urge you for that reason as well to defeat this resolution, even though I'm, um, I'm probably counting the votes, I have a pretty good idea of how it's going to turn out. So. Thank you, Representative. Can I take questions? Oh, sure, yes. Okay. I, I'm going to start off with the reason why I would deserve the rights of the chair, yeah. because some of the things you said I'm a little confused. Yes. Uh, first of all, I want to put clarification on this is actually germane. Okay. Because it passed the House under our rule. All right, fair enough, okay, yes. The, the non germane part of it is because we're attaching it to yeah. SB 217, yeah. which deals with Cannon Mountain. This is a process that's been done for many, many years in the House. Yes. That's legal. Oh, yes, I understand, of course, so yes. I want to make sure we yeah. clarify that, yeah. what you said. Second of all, you also said about sustainability, local uh, agriculture, yes. private property rights. Did you even read Ickley? Um, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by reading Ickley. It's a, uh, I mean, that's an organization, it's not a publication. I'm, I have, uh, I have, I have I have read some some websites and some publications related to it, and I have um, guess spoken against, out against other resolutions that are along the same lines as this amendment. Well, so. The reason why I asked that question here is before anyone else yeah. asked you this question, because Ickley, you said you support private property rights. Yes. I want to make sure I know where you're going, because Ickley is against private property rights. So um, I'm. I'm not sure how to answer that because I um, don't feel, from what I've heard, that it's against private property rights. And certainly, and, but you're certainly, um, the value of, say, my property, like the one that my family owns in Durham that I live on, it has a lot to do, the value of that property has a lot to do with the, of what's going on in the properties around it. You know, I've got, uh, I live in a, I live in a nice, I live in a nice community. I live near a walkable downtown. I've got a nice, I've got a well-maintained road going past my house, et cetera, et cetera. So my, my, you know, for example, my little quarter acre near downtown Durham is not, you know, it's not a universe in and of itself. You know, it's uh, part of part of a community, which is part of the state of New Hampshire, and so forth and so on. Well, so I go to Representative Cunningham, my final question is, so you're in support of the UN controlling and doing things in your community versus the state of New Hampshire, is that what you're saying? No, I mean, I'm in favor of allowing, uh, allowing local communities to do what they 
see fit to create a sustainable environment in their community. And if, um, and if that's, so I mean, I, I certainly, the UN actually has very little power to control what goes on in Durham or Wyndham or any other community. Um, we had a resolution about its budget last year, which I testified on the budget of uh, the entire United Nations is less than the budget of the state of New Hampshire. And as we all know, the state of New Hampshire can barely even control, you know, it's however many, Thousand, just a few thousand square miles of property in uh, North America. So I'm, um, yes. I mean, I, 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 I mean, I certainly don't favor the UN running my town, but I don't think that's uh, like what's, what's going on with the programs here. So, so. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative. Yeah. And please interrupt me if yeah. I yeah. misunderstood your uh, testimony. But I understood you to say that you felt this particular amendment to Senate Bill 217 may prevent your community from having a farmer's market on the town property. I was wondering if you could point out the section in this amendment that does that. Oh. I can't find it. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm probably concerned about section five. Um, I mean, I just got this amendment, uh, I just got this amendment 10 minutes ago. Most of the time I was standing there like, Trying to figure out what I was going to say after I impulsively sent in my pink card, so I'm, you know, but I, I do believe 318B could be construed as preventing communities from uh, particip getting participating initiatives like that, and it does get um, some state. There is uh, some state funding that helps support that. You know, the farmers market in my town. We are part of a statewide program, which uh, presumably. Depending on how it's how it's enforced and who's enforcing it, you know, could that is one of the things that maybe could you know be uh, impacted if somebody decided that was against um, what would be RSA 318B? Should we pass the bill? But, and also uh, Section Six, I think, also you know could impact that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Well, it says, and it's derivative. So, I mean, if we had, uh, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm just speaking about a bill. As I said, I'm speaking about a fairly, you know, a two-page piece of legislation that I've only seen, um, you know, I've only seen, well, now about 12 minutes ago. So I'm. Uh, Point taken. Thank you, Representative. Thank you, thank you. Mr. Chairman, and, and thank you, yeah. Representative. I didn't want to put you on a spot, but, but I, I write a lot of letters to the editor. Yeah. And if, if Agenda 21 and ICLEI, in, in the tenets, in their brief, they are totally and absolutely against private ownership of property, which is diabolically opposed to the Constitution of the state of New Hampshire. Which one are you going to back? Uh, well, that's a hypothetical question. Um, certainly the countries that have abolished private property have seen actually more ecological problems. They had more problems with sustainability. Um, that's, uh, that's certainly something I would oppose. I don't, I, I'm, problem is I just don't know if I, don't know if we share the same premise about even what it is ICLEI and Agenda 21 are. Um, now certainly if we, you know, certainly countries like the, the old Soviet Union which tried to abolish private property, that was, uh, you know, that was a disaster. They went, you know, very far in that direction, and that actually caused more environmental damage, you know, than, than uh, our current yeah, system in the United States does. But, yeah, but I, I, I've had, yeah. I have a hearing problem, and, I, and I'm having a problem understanding yeah. and hearing what you're saying. Um, so I didn't really get the answer. To oh, that. well, I'm not sure how to answer the question, because I'm, I'm uh, the problem is, and maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't believe that, Anything that ICLEI and Agenda 21 are doing is the abolition of private property. Now, if, if I believed that this was the abolition of private property, I would, of course, be opposed to it. And I guess also was trying to say that 
uh, countries experimented with the abolition of private property that proved to be a uh, you know an environmental disaster. Um, 